Hey guys, I just wanted to make another quick video about um, how we can use some more vector data in QGIS. So I have an app that's called Strava and it's totally free to download on, a, on your smartphone. Um, and basically this app just collects um, geospatial data. It, it tracks activities like running or walking or biking and it, it saves all this data and just by the nature of this type of data it's geospatial and QGIS can actually handle it. So if we click on like an activity here um, it actually lets us download this data. So if you click here and export GPX that's gonna let us export um, this data into this GPX format which it's a type of uh, geospatial format um, and QGIS can handle it, but we're also going to convert it to a shapefile just because that's a little bit more prominent in in um, the GIS world. So I'm going to paste it here. Actually, I already downloaded it earlier, but um, now we have that GPX file, and we should just be able to browse. So I'm in a brand new project here. I'm going to browse to this folder we've been using, and there it is, launchrun.gpx. And if we drag it in, it's going to ask us which layers we want to add. So there are multiple layers in this GPX. So we're just going to say select all of them and add them all. And what we're interested in here is really just um, just the waypoints. No, not the way, the track points. So this is every time the phone took a GPS recording. Um, so I think this is cool because this is our own data that we generated ourselves. And it's it's useful. Like We can do cool stuff with it. So if we um, open up this attribute table and inspect it a little bit, we see that we have elevation, timestamp, and that's basically it. Um, so let's actually save this as a shapefile. So to do that, you can just right click it here and say export and save feature as, and we want to save it as a shapefile. And I'm going to save it in QGIS videos and I'm just going to say um, converted from GPX dot shape and then just click OK. Alright, so we, it looks like we got it, but I'm just going to remove all this stuff to make it cleaner. And I'm going to refresh here. Where did it go? Did it go there? Should have went there. Yeah, there it is. Converted from GPI. I just don't think this has refreshed yet. Why isn't it? Hmm, it's weird. Well, what we can do is we can just drag it in, and to drag this shape file, and you always need to, you actually have to grab the .shp. So I'm going to grab that. I'm not sure why it wasn't. It's not updating in here. I feel like it just has to refresh. Anyway, um, now we can open the attribute table again, and it's just a little bit more. It's since shapefiles are a little bit more well known, they're better handled and there's more support for them. So one thing you'll notice here is there's no like coordinate information. Like we can't see in, in the attribute table there's no geometry it's called. So there's no lat long. But obviously this data has some sort of um, information about its position in the earth because otherwise it wouldn't know to put the data right here on the map. So obviously that data exists somewhere. So there's a tool, it, it's just not in this attribute table. So there's a tool that we can run that will populate um, fields with the lat long. And that's one of the, uh, something I, I find myself doing a lot. So um, I think the tool's called export geometry or add, add geometry attributes. So this is basically saying, all right, what input layer? So that's the converted from GPX. We want to calculate using the layer CRS. So that means the layer coordinate reference system. So that's whatever this um, 
file is projected in. And we know it's it's in 4326, so that's WGS84. So we're just going to run that and close it and close this. And you see it made this new added geometry info uh, layer here. And if we open this, you can see that we have X chords and Y chords. So that's longitude and latitude right there. And Z actually, so that's the elevation. So I think we already had an elevation field already. So that's, that, notice that's ex almost the same as this. So the elevation field here is 107 and over here 107.8. So that's the same thing, but um, that, that's pretty interesting. I thought I would share that with you guys because this is a cool way you, you can make real meaningful geospatial data just with your, your smart, with your phone because um, your phones have GPS in them, which is cool. Uh, and yeah, there's just a ton of other stuff, like you can get all the, the Twitter data, like Twitter API data, and use that because that's geo-enabled. Um, there's just a ton of cool stuff you can do. All right, talk to you guys later.